Okay, let's talk a little bit about networking and organizational schemas. If you're serious about surviving, you should begin to think now of either forming or joining a survival network. It just makes good sense as you stand a better chance of surviving with various trusted comrades. Now, there are two general categories to consider. First, we have the formal survival network, which requires buy-in on a very large scale. It usually, but not always, requires you to purchase land with a larger group. It may also require one to perform certain tasks in a community. They many times have a leadership council to whom everyone can be accountable, and they may also assign guard or security shifts as well as work shifts. Now the second type is the informal survival network. In this setup you informally choose people with whom you have trust and some past history with. You won't necessarily share your food or supplies but you generally agree to assist each other for short periods of time. That is if you need to bug out then you can rely on your network to put you up for a specified amount of time until you've made other arrangements. And depending on the severity of the situation it may even be necessary to consolidate resources with a network partner. Since the informal network is more independence-based, everyone agrees to prepare on their own to the best of their ability. So if you're headed to another person's location, you usually agree beforehand to pack your own rations, sleeping gear, weapons, whatever. Of course, in the spirit of humanity, people in informal networks also break bread together. They trade and barter with each other. They also share regional intelligence with each other. That's all assumed in an informal network, but everyone is also expected to pull their own low to be prepared and self-sufficient. Okay, I'm going to hit you with some harsh facts. No one, and I mean no one in the survival community, is going to hook up with someone who hasn't put some serious time, effort, energy, and resources into preparing themselves. Hey, that's just a brutal truth. Most people I meet in the survival community are very compassionate, but they're not stupid. In order to prepare, you got to have a rock-solid plan. Anything less probably won't do you much good. Why? Because there will undoubtedly be a million things that are going to get in your way and want to stop you from accomplishing your survival goals. It happened to us. We don't have any money. We can't find the time. We're busy. We'll get to it next week. On and on and on and on. Like I said, deal with it because it's not going to get any easier. And the procrastination will persist until you make up your mind to just do it. And it's as simple as that. A rock solid plan is also necessary because you're doing a whole lot. You're essentially becoming your own grocery store, your own security force, your own source for different types of fuels, your own hospital or trauma station, your own source for water, your own communication center, and not to mention your own tactical training center. Now that's a lot of work. So here's a schematic that will help illustrate some general guidelines for preparation. Now keep in mind these are only suggestive options and by all means you should tailor this schematic to fit your own situational needs. Again, this is only one method and I'm passing it on to you as a labor of love. You can do with it what you want. Okay, for bugging in or for scenarios that require you to stay put, get your storable food and water. Get your medical supplies in order. Get your alternative currencies like gold or silver or barter items. Get your alternative fuel sources like a generator, solar panels, or a wood stove. Get your weapons for both self-defense and hunting. And get your ammunition stores ready as well for practice, hunting, and self-defense. And build up your reference library. Information can be a lifesaver for bugging out or for Scenarios that require you to be mobile, get your bug out bag together, including cooking gear, a tent, and a highly rated sleeping bag. Establish your emergency caches and locate them strategically. Establish your network locations and partners and choose them carefully. Get your communication gear together, be that GPS, radio, CB, ham, whatever you choose. Get your medical trauma bag together and have your deployable food and water at the ready. Now, if you're bugging out, you'll want to bring weapons for both hunting and self-defense. You choose the caliber and type of weapons that are right for you. Same goes for ammunition. Have your rounds at the ready and in your rucksack. Now, if you have to move to an alternate location within your network, you'll need a bug out vehicle, preferably one that's suited to deal with different types of terrain. If not, just use the car that you've got. You've got to go with what you have. Now, you'll be hauling all your bug out gear with you to your new location 
question. What about the bug out bag, you ask? Well, at this point, for me at least, the bug out bag becomes just luggage with shoulder straps until further notice, and it gets tossed into the truck with the rest of the bug out gear. I still refer to it for cooking or the sleeping bag or what have you. It just isn't on my back at this point. Okay, from here you have the option of relocating to other network positions. These are carefully selected and predetermined. They are also strategically located in key positions. Now, if possible, they should form a perimeter around your home base site, leaving you relocation options in every direction. As always, some of your network sites will, for whatever reasons, not be available to you during the crisis situation. In fact, you can count on that. So factor in for this possibility. Still try to retain as many network routes as feasibly possible. Now, let's say the roads are open, the situation is clear, and you're on your way to a network location. Then, bam, it no longer becomes possible to continue, for whatever reason. If you must continue, you now have the option of continuing on with your bug out bag and web gear. Okay, let's start over. The roads are open, the situation is clear, and you're on your way to a network location. This time you make it to your objective. Great. If you afterwards need to hunt or forage for less than a day, take your web gear plus whatever you need, like weapons. If you have to hunt or forage for two to three days, take your web gear and bug out bag plus weapons. Now, if you're out on an extended or multiple day mission and you get separated from your network position, you can reassess and make your way back at a later time. Time. If that network position becomes permanently compromised and you're separated and all alone, you can still potentially make your way to a pre-established cache point and from there you can re-nourish and resupply and hopefully eventually make it to an alternate network location. But it all starts here in the preparation phase. Now to this column you can certainly add homesteading skills like home gardening, aquaponics, or raising your own food like rabbits or chickens. And to this column over here you can surely add bush crafting skills like trapping snares or building expedient shelters. And my good friend Dave Canterbury has a great YouTube channel called Wilderness Outfitters and there you'll find some tremendous information in this area. Now the bug out vehicle also becomes central when bugging in, especially for resupplying your key location. It's also crucial for transporting you and your gear out of the area quickly if need be. If disaster strikes en route, you are still capable of carrying on with your bug out bag and web gear, your strategically placed caches, and finally your predetermined network locations. Now you may ask, when do I move and when do I stay put? Well, that all depends on a multitude of factors. You need to have consistent and reliable intelligence in order to determine your situation and to accurately justify a move. If bugging out looks dangerous, then stay put by all means. However, as your situation changes, and it will, you need to be prepared to make adjustments accordingly. At one point, you may question staying put, and at another point, you may deem it absolutely necessary necessary to move in fast. An all-terrain vehicle can make that transition easier. Again, it's all up to you. Use what you have. However, the vehicle situation can change as well, moving you to proceed on foot with your gear on your back. Now be prepared for that as well. Also be prepared for your situation to reverse, opening an opportunity for a possible return to your original home base. Remember, situation always dictates, and that will determine your situational requirements and that in turn will determine the tool sets or gear to be used. But remember, your ability to respond effectively to your situational requirements depends on how thoroughly you prepared your tool sets or gear at the preparation phase. And it all comes back to this, folks. So to summarize, get your gear together, get your home base in order and squared away, network with like-minded folks and make arrangements carefully and accordingly, and establish emergency caches at strategic locations. And finally, you should view your overall plan as a schematic or grid that interconnects with other potential locales and with your emergency caches as well. This, my friends, is your total effective range. Keep in mind that this is just a sample map used here for purposes of demonstration. Now, if you need to relocate for whatever reason, be prepared to redraw and reconfigure your perimeter, orienting the grid to your new location. And that goes for whichever location you move 
move to. You will always need to redraw and reconfigure your perimeter each and every time. Okay, that's it for now. Stay safe, my brothers and sisters. This is Analytical Survival, signing out.